You are tuned in to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. Join us now on another exciting metaphysical journey. Relax, tune in, drop out, and take a seat by the fire as we explore new realms and possibilities. This is Magenta Pixie. You can find me at magentapixie.weebly.com. But now, here is Zany Mystic and guest. Enjoy the show. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to a Fireside Chat with Zany Mystic. I'm your host, Lance White. Tonight, my guest is Barbara Han Clow. Barbara is an internationally acclaimed ceremonial teacher, author, and Mayan calendar researcher. Her numerous books include The Pleiadian Agenda, Alchemy of Nine Dimensions, Catastrophobia, Liquid Light of Sex, and The Mayan Code. She has taught at sacred sites throughout the world and maintains an astrological website with her free astro flash for the new moon at www.handcloud2012.com. So because we want to get into the conversation rather than talking about Barbara, let's welcome her to the show now. Hi, Barbara. How are you? Hi, Lance. I'm fine. How are you? (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I want before we dive into whatever topics we're we're uh, guided towards, I just have to tell you and everybody else that the alchemy of nine dimensions is a mind blowing roadmap and an absolute must as a handbook for awakening. Well, thank you. Thank you You're very welcome. much, and that's very exciting for me because, as you know, the the original information came in in ninety four ninety five in the Pleiadian agenda, um, and mm. the original information was channeled. And then since then, um, my partner and I have been teaching it, and I've also written a book about it called Alchemy of Nine Dimensions. In other words, Alchemy of Nine Dimensions, the one that you like so much, is a scientific analysis of a channeled book. And I think it's probably the first time this ever occurred. Um, but because I've had this 16 years now of teaching this information and researching it, um, what's really exciting for me is that maybe 10, 15 years ago, most people had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> and I think it's a fantastic measure of people's growth that so yeah. many people seem to understand this book. Um, the one you have is a new revision that just came out a couple of months ago because, of course, since 2004, there were major um, scientific issues that came up and I needed to update it. And um, the new the new edition, um, the revised edition, is selling, has already sold more than the original edition did. And this well, it is, should. <laughs> well, but this is a sign that people people can understand it. In other words, try to yeah. imagine yourself back in, in 2004 reading this book. You'd oh, yeah. be pretty puzzled, you know. So people yes, yes. are really waking up. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, what... It's so it's so interesting because I have read a lot of books in my lifetime because uh, it's been a lifelong journey, and then so many books for the show. But it was almost as if since Carl Kalman's uh, conscious co- convergence on the 17th and 18th of July this month, mm-hmm. uh, people around me, my closest friends, are having the most incredible uh, transformational experiences unique to them and they're just tossing they're just making this a jump or leap which <laughs> it's like light years into some uh an, an amazingly raised awareness of their their waking up from 30 years of alcoholism another one has found uh you know a higher source or higher power and he's just doing incredible things and then i had my own experience and then when i read your book Everything it just brought everything into focus and opened so many doors for me. I well, you know, great. especially really about the to hear that, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, maybe you could talk about the, the how you arrived at the dimensions and how we can access all nine dimensions and what's been stopping us until now. Well, um, the dimensions came, all, all of the information about the nine dimensions came through uh, in a channel state. And mm-hmm. so once once the material was in, it was tape recorded and then it was transcribed for me so I could use it as a book. And once the material was all in, I only understood about maybe 50% of it. In other words, yeah. I understood the first five dimensions, but I really yeah. didn't understand the sixth dimension through the ninth dimension. So then, as I said to you a moment ago, um, I started researching it scientifically 
actually, because because it's it is very scientific material. Yes, it was probably great that it came through me, because although I'm an astrologer and I have a fairly um, cosmological mindset, um, I sure didn't understand things like quantum physics and and um, string theory, and right? Topology, the different sciences in it, you know, and so it came through in a fairly pure form, because yes. I didn't have any idea what I was talking about, <laughs> and then it for me now this is my only channel book otherwise I tend to be a, a left brain researcher with a pretty strong right brain um, sense of direction mm. and so once I went out and started teaching it I, I can assure you it was really embarrassing to teach this material when I didn't understand it myself and mm. during the early workshops back in 1995 1996 97 a lot of scientists uh, physicists and mathematicians were coming to my workshops and they were really dismayed to really <laughs> they had a person who didn't understand what she had written, but they were, they were teaching me. So by 2004, I had a pretty good handle on the, the science of all of the dimensions except the ninth dimension, and I just decided to go to press because another thing that happened um, with this material is there's a whole bunch of scientific theories about each dimension, um, which at the time it, I brought it in um, didn't um, agree with um, conventional science at all. In fact, in many cases, disagreed with it. And so then from 96 through 2002, 2003, proofs for the things that came through in this book book started to appear um, coming through scientists. And of course, I, I documented all that. Fortunately, I kept track of it all. So by 2004, I decided it was time to go to press because I just thought this was just so exciting. And then in 2005, I, I discovered Carl Kalamann's um, Mayan calendar theory. And then mm. I had the information for the ninth dimension because his material is really the only explanation for the ninth dimension in this book. Wow. Wow. So it's been a journey. It's been a real learning for, for me. And I must say, at this point, I'm a person who loves science. I can read science books easily. I can't do calculations, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but but I love science. And so so another um, really neat thing about Alchemy of Nine Dimensions is the sixth dimension is the dimension of um, a, a world of sacred geometry that mm. then causes replication in our dimension, which is the third dimension. Um, because mm -hmm. the third dimension in this system is linear space and time and so mm -hmm. during the period that I was understanding the material in this book we were we of course were having um, constant crop circles especially in England and the crop circles are really an expression of that six dimensional um, realm in this book and so fortunately we had something going on in the planet that was awakening people because millions and millions of people have awakened an understanding of geometry because of the crop circles Mm -hmm. And sacred geometry is kind of a hard field to study. Um, oh, Fibonacci, yeah, yeah. Fibonacci, you know, spirals and all that stuff. It's pretty tough stuff. And I yeah. know when I first started studying it, once this book came in, I felt like I had a headache all the time. <laughs> but at this point, millions and millions of people are just flipping out on how geometry creates nature and creates forms in the third dimension. It's really, it's really exciting. Mm. Mm -hmm. So this this summer's crop circles are really amazing because speaking of alchemy of nine dimensions, apparently it's really breaking through at, at a, a larger level as far as I can tell. And most of the crop circles this summer, at least half of them, are different um, workings out of nine-dimensional theory. Wow. So I just have a blast looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that blew me away was uh, – you know, I, I haven't been following the crop circles real closely, but uh, one of them, or several of them, show eight planets, and I was trying to figure out how the uh, seven sisters of the Pleiades could have an eighth. And when you mention in your book that the our own sun is part of the Pleiades star system, is that uh, correct, accurate information? Well, first of all, that's what the Pleiadian said in 95. And one thing wow. I, I always like to do is I really like to differenti differentiate between something that they've said and then something that I right. really verify. So, of course, once they said that, then I went to work on it. And first of all, a fair number of early Greek astronomers between about 500 um, B.C. and around 200 A.D., 
believed that that the um, Pleiades um, are that our solar that our solar system is part of the Pleiadian system, and that Alcyon is the central star. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. there are some avant-garde astronomers now who who are are looking into this. In fact, there's a really wonderful book by a guy named uh, his name is Crutenden. I don't remember his first name, but his book is called The Lost Star of Space and Time, and it's a great book. And um, he believes that our sun is a binary is part of a binary system, um, Mm -hmm. which is extremely likely because now that we've been able to get out into space with really good telescopes, around 85-90% of of the stars have a binary companion. So it's highly unlikely that we're not a binary system. And so Crutenden um, is working on the possibility that the twin star to to our sun is actually Alcyon, which is just fascinating. So people are looking into this, but of course it's not something that I can analyze scientifically. It would take a really good astronomer to really take this seriously. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, uh, and one of the things that uh, many New Age uh, people that are uh, taken seriously uh, are making uh, claims that the, during this shift in consciousness that uh, many people on the planet won't make it to the fifth or, or the sixth, and some might have to... Uh, repeat the whole cycle and all that, but according to the information that is in the nine dimensions, it appears that it's not, that's a linear way of, of thinking about it. We have access to and are in all nine at the same time, and we're just simply not living multidimensionally. Yeah, it's a matter of whether whether people are aware. And when you yes. are, yeah, when you are actually living in nine dimensions of consciousness, you're pretty much in in a state of very high level enlightenment. And um, yeah. in the past, people could only sustain um, states of consciousness like that for very brief periods of time. But mm-hmm. at this point, more and more people are beginning to take those kinds of steps with their consciousness. And one of the things that I love I love about the nine dimensions, the, the theory from the Pleiadian is that when you start to really analyze the nature of each dimension, like like take the seventh dimension, which is the mm-hmm. dimension of sound, and then sound comes into the sixth dimension and creates geometry. And sound creating geometry is something that we all are pretty familiar with. Most of us have seen Matsuro Emoto's um, uh, book, a book mm. of crystals, Mm-hmm. And that's that's an example of of actually being able to see that sound creating water. And then some people have seen cymatics machines, um, which actually show you through a medium how sound creates geometry. So one of the things I like about the system is I just explained something to you that you can understand pretty easily. And then if you have a chance to watch a cymatics machine, which I have, it'll blow oh. your mind because you, <laughs> you, I'm telling you, you'll see it. Like like for example. You know, imagine you're on the beach and imagine you're looking at a really in- incredibly complicated shell. And that shell, of course, is demonstrating all the principles of geometry and Fibonacci spirals and all that because that's how we see it in nature. Yeah. Well, imagine if you could actually hear the sound that creates oh. shells. See, so wow. we're waking up in a really wonderful, mystical way because we do live on a planet where sound is actually formulating geometry that then creates us. It's, it's just a matter of whether we're in touch with it or not. Yes, and, and then uh, it's, it makes it so clear and simple and easy to understand when it's explained uh, what these different uh, dimensions are and how they are basically stepping down through the lower dimensions and what they, uh, you know, how they uh, all fit together. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that was astonishing to me, because I've always, uh, you know, heard people say, well, I, ch- I got tapped into the Akashic Records and uh, this is what I saw and so on and so forth. And, I've had kind of this linear idea that they're out in the clouds somewhere where God is. Yeah. And, and when they're in the core of the earth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's it's liberating. Yeah, and, and it's and it's all scientific too. Be, I mean, it's yeah. detection because the first dimension that you're alluding to is the iron core crystal in the center of our planet. And when that came in back in '95, science had not verified that yet. That was the first verification in 1996, and that's when I started getting really excited, you know. And and so meanwhile, the Pleiadians, first of all, what they said about the center of the Earth turned out to be scientifically verified. So then 
once that happened, then I figured, well, maybe I could also figure that the rest of the stuff they said was was true, even though you couldn't necessarily verify it. So mm. the second level of what they're saying is they're saying that our fir- that's the first dimension. The iron core crystal um, is vibrating because it's vibrating in tune with all of, this, of, the, of the other centers in the universe, the, the, the centers 